Chernoff, thank you. Mr. Phillips, from January, and we're going to assume that the contract, was, uh, the agreement was signed on January 26, 2009, for purposes of this question. From January 26 to March, first week of March 2009, were, were, was there any movement, was there any production on the Th This Is It uh, concert tour? No, um, there wasn't. All right. And, and the initial agreement that you made that involved you and Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson Company, was for 31 shows, or actually up to 31 shows. Is Correct. that right? Correct. Okay. Was there any conversation about the number of shows? Um, are you familiar with, with, with the teaser, the, the term teaser? In, in, in advertising? Yeah, in advertising mm -hmm. with regard yes. to the number of shows? Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Yes. And no. Mm -hmm. I know. Yes. All right. And, uh, and was there some uh, plan by AEG Live and perhaps uh, others to uh, perhaps tease a certain number of shows to the public to see how things would go with regard to the sales of the shows? It, if I'm understanding your question. I'm not asking right, I'm sorry, but I think you do understand. Okay. It, initially, we put 10 shows on sale, or we advertised 10 shows, um, was the initial run. You would never, as a promoter, put all of your shows on sale at the same time because it becomes a disincentive for early purchase. All right, so that was the first, the first advertised number of shows. Correct. All right. And when was this done? Um, right after the, uh, the press conference, March 5th. All right, and that press conference was March 5th. Mm -hmm. And correct. it was held at the O2 Arena? That is correct. Okay. Now let's talk about, about any conversations you, you had with Michael Jackson between January 26th and March 5th. Um, was there further or ongoing negotiations at that time? Or what, were you essentially... Um, had, or had you essentially stopped having contact with Michael Jackson? No, we um, had to put the artwork together for the on sale. So the discussions were, were creative, and I think Paul Gongor had other discussions with him about the production. All right, and that's what, that, what, mm -hmm. what was occurring between January 26th and March 5th. Is that Correct. right? Correct. Okay. Now, on March 5th, did you go out to London for this press conference, for this announcement? Yes, I did. Okay. And... Um, It describe for us um, how this press conference was set up at the O2 Arena. Well, my staff in London um, put it together and organized it. Um, <clears throat> we had a press agent named Alan Edwards, who I believe had worked with Michael before, and um, he pretty much organized, invited the press, uh, the media, and, and my, my staff set it up. All right, and you and your staff went out to O2 Arena for this press conference. That is correct. And so as did Michael Jackson and his security staff. Is that correct. right? Correct. Did you stay in the same hotel as he did? No. Right. I want to... Just a moment. Sorry for answering. Right. The objection sustained. The last answer straight. I want to regard, direct your attention to, to the, the press conference itself. Was Michael Jackson scheduled to speak at that press conference? Yes, he was. Do you know when he was scheduled to speak? Objection relevance. The objection is sustained. 315 352. Right. Was Michael Jackson late for his press conference? Objection relevant. Sustained. 315 and 352. And next, another subject. Thank you. Were you present at his press conference? Yes. Objection. Yes, the court sorry. just ruled next subject. Thank you. The well, objection is not, sustained. I believe that the last subject was whether he was late. And this is whether or not he had attended. Should I just stay away from the press conference at all? completely, Correct. Your Honor? Correct. Thank you. No press conference. Okay. You can move to another subject. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Um, after the press conference, then, the, there would be a focus, then, on the production of the show. Is that right? Correct. And that's exactly what happened? Correct. Okay. Now, before we get to that, let's talk about the sales of the show. After the announcement was made on March 5th, um, how, how were sales? We, we started fabulous, right. over the top. 
and, and you, how long did it take you to, to blow past the 10 then the 31 ships? Well, we did a pre-registration, uh, meaning people could register to purchase tickets. Um, and one of the reasons we did that was to create a database for Michael so he could sell music to his fans and, start, and have direct contact uh, through a website called michaeljacksonlive.com. All right, and then and, and so what happened with the sales? The registrations were um, we we had never seen that kind of demand, at least in my career, um, that kind of demand for tickets for a show, for a show. It became clear that thirty one shows were not going to be enough. Yes, it was it was obvious that we would have blown through the sales on thirty one shows in the, what we call the pre-sale, and, and not have had any tickets left for the general public on sale. All right, so what did you do in response to that? Or what did you or Paul Gongawer do? Um, Paul called me, um, said uh, in, in his inevitable fashion, dude, uh, can you call uh, Dr. Tomei and see if Michael will agree to do more shows because this is an unprecedented demand. All right, and was that done? Yes, I called Dr. Tomei. All right. Did Michael Jackson eventually agree to do more shows? Right. They say it almost simultaneous right. with my conversations with Dr. Tomei. I also spoke to Michael. Just, just like that? Within 20 minutes. All right. And, but my, Michael Jackson had some requests to do more shows, right? That is correct. And what were those requests? He, he uh, Dr. Tomei first told me what they were, and then Michael called me directly um, and uh, basically uh, what he wanted was, uh, one, 50 shows. That was the maximum amount of shows he wanted to do because he didn't want to, as he said to me, live in, in London and have to get a new passport. Um, and he, what he wanted was me to find uh, an estate for him to, that I could lease um, outside of London. Um, and he was very specific. He wanted 16-plus acres running streams, horses, um, and basically what he explained to me is he didn't want to be trapped in a hotel, hotel suite, no matter how beautiful, in the heart of London and not be able to leave and have the kids and he cloistered. He wanted to give them a pastoral country vibe, living vibe. Okay, so condition one was that I find an estate for him to live in and the, and the children. And then um, condition two was that at the 50th show, he wanted me to arrange for the Guinness Book of World Records to be there because he knew this was a feat that no performer would ever be able to beat. And you knew that was a feat that no performer had ever beaten? Probably never would, huh? Unfortunately, in my career, yes. Um, Let's talk about the the process then that 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 went on to get this show together for the O2 Arena. Um, and were you involved or at least familiar with the process of of getting the This Is It um, production um, prepared and ready for final shows? Yes. All right. In March, was there any production going on for the This Is It show? No, no, no production had started. Um, I don't believe uh, it kicked into gear until um, sometime in April. What was happening in March? In March, um, Michael um, and Paul had had um, a couple of meetings about uh, the show itself with some production people we had brought on board um, to help do the budgets. Um, and to the best of my recollection, um, that's when Michael told Paul that he wanted Kenny Ortega to be the director. All right, and Kenny Ortega was contact. Correct. All right, now let's go into April. In April, what mm -hmm. what was go uh, was Kenny Ortega part of the team in April? By April? By April, I believe he was. All right, what was going on in April with regard to this production? Um, Kenny had arranged f 
for um, a production designer named Michael Cotton to be employed. Um, Travis Payne is chief choreographer. Um, and a sort of personnel um, were hired. So we're, we're, we're hiring personnel in April. Mm -hmm. uh, is, are there other meetings going on about uh, some of the creative issues that are, that are involved in the production? To the best of my knowledge, yes, I wasn't in all those meetings. All right, so we, we're hiring staff. Are we also um, rehearsing, or not rehearsing, but uh, um, um, audition. Uh, the audition. word audition. is lost. What do you do with dancers? Uh, audition. 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 Thanks. Thank you. Lost is that work. okay? Auditioning oh. dancers during that period of time? Yes. Okay. Now, in, in April, then, when everything is ultimately set up and we've got the personnel in place, when, do, when ultimately does, do rehearsals start for the production? Yeah, yeah, I honestly don't recollect when the uh, rehearsal started. W do, you, do you know, could you narrow it down to a month? Did they begin it in April or in May? I believe um, that they may have uh, started in uh, May. Okay. But I'm not 100% I'm not sure. Let's, let's go back to April, and I want to talk about, or, or May, uh, early May. I want to talk about um, any conversation that you might have had with Michael Jackson about a personal doctor. Do you recall having that conversation with him? Yeah, it was a conversation that I had with him. It would have been sometime in May. Sometime in May. Mm -hmm. All right. And was this... A, was this a topic that you approached Michael on or he approached you on? No, it started, um, I wasn't involved in the initial discussions. All right. How did you get involved? Um, I had returned from a road trip. I was traveling um, and I went, I stopped by the forum because rehearsals at that point had moved into the forum. Um, you know so what? this would have been later in May. Late May, yeah. all right. Had moved into the forum and um, I was walking in the hallway in front of the production office and uh, Paul Gongaware, a gentleman named Tim Woolley, who was a tour accountant or a show accountant for the shows, and uh, Frank DeLeo came up to me and said, um, we're having an issue with Michael on the hiring of a personal physician. He wants to hire his own physician to attend to his needs 24-7 and have him travel with the tour um, and we haven't been able to talk him out of it and it's going to be very very expensive um, could you have take a shot at Michael and see if you can convince him to use a, a, a London based physician all right and you agreed to take a shot yes I did all right and and what did you do I uh, called Michael I called Michael Amir to set up a call to speak to Michael Jackson because that was a protocol and I uh, spoke to Michael and I said to him, I said, you know, Mike Jackson. I spoke to Michael Jackson and I said, you know, Mike, it's going to be very expensive to hire a doctor from America and have them on call 24 7 with you in um, London for these shows. And, you know, it is London when we're in a major capital city. Um, do you think that would that be okay if we got you someone, but we got someone who was based in London and was available when you needed them? And he was very firm and said, no, I need a, uh, my own physician and I need him 24-7 um, and I have a physician. All right, and this is, and this is in late May. I believe so, right. Mr. Chernoff. And, and, and you, you said what after Michael Jackson told you that? Well, I mean, he was firm, and uh, I said, okay, then uh, I'll have Paul Gongware negotiate the best terms he can with the doctor for you. All right. And that was, that was your idea to have Paul Gongware call this particular well, he doctor? Well, Paul was already engaged right. in okay. the discussions. I really had nothing to do with uh, the hiring of... All right. Doctor. And later on, you learned that the doctor that Michael Jackson was talking about was Dr. Conrad Murray. Correct. Had you met Dr. Murray prior to that conversation you had with Michael Jackson? No. Um, you, you knew nothing about Dr. Murray? Nothing. Okay. And Michael Jackson never mentioned that I have a physician or anything of that nature? 
No, we never had that discussion. No. All right. At some point, though, you met Dr. Murray. Correct. After that conversation. When, when did you meet Dr. Murray? Um, to the best of my recollection, there was a meeting at Michael's house um, on Carrollwood Drive. Um, I think it was in very early June. Uh, was it the first week of June, second week of June? It would, it would, I think it was the first week of June. All right. Was it on a weekday or was it on a weekend? It was a weekday. And you're sure it was a weekend? No, I, th I think it, I believe it was a week, a weekday. A weekday. Yeah. I mean, right. the truth is, I'm just dealing with recollections of events that happened a long time ago. I'm not 100 percent sure. Well, um, do you know whether there was rehearsal that day? I don't. I don't know. All right. Do you know what time the meeting was? It was in the late afternoon. Uh, before evening, before four, before five. I'm, either four or five. All right. This meeting was at Michael Jackson's house. At the Carrollwood Drive house. All right. And who called the meeting? I think Paul Gongawer and Frank DeLeo did. And do you know what the topic or the reason, was, what reason was given to call this meeting? It was a prelim it was a preliminary meeting to discuss, um, you know, what uh, Dr. Murray was going to do for Michael, um, and uh, there were some concerns that Frank had and others about Michael not eating, losing weight. Um, and we wanted to just have a general meeting to discuss Michael's health. All right. So at the meeting was Frank DeLeo. Correct. And yourself. Dr. Murray was there. Correct. Michael Jackson was there. Correct. And? And Paul Gongawer. Paul Gongawer. What about Kenny Ortega? I don't, I don't, to the best of my recollection, he wasn't at this meeting. Okay. Now, I want to, I want, we're going to go back to that meeting in mm -hmm. a second, but now I want to kind of move back to May, and I want to, to, um, to ask you, do you recall any concerns being, being given by Kenny Ortega or others about Michael Jackson's condition during performances or rehearsals? In May? In May. No. All right. Did you have any conversations with Michael Amir Williams about about um, Michael Jackson's condition? No. Right. So let's go to the meeting on, in, in, the, in June, the first meeting. Um, you, do you recall the conversation, what conversation was being had at that meeting? Um, very, very vaguely because it was so long ago. Um, I just remember during the meeting, Dr. Murray said that he was going to make sure Michael had a proper diet and he was preparing these very high nutrient protein shakes for him. And that's kind of the highlight of that I remember of the meeting. Do you remember having a conversation with, with Dr. Murray about Michael Jackson's health, about his condition during that meeting? Just, ask, just asking him how is his health, is it good? And he said yes, he's in great health. Any other conversation with him? Regarding? Um, anything involving Michael Jackson's condition or medical history? No. All right. All right, so the agreement was made, or there, were you satisfied at the meeting that everybody had addressed the issues with Michael Jackson's weight and health? Yeah, yeah, I felt very good based on both Michael and Dr. Murray's responses, All right. well, how did as you did Frank DeLeo. And how did you feel about, about how Dr. Murray responded to your concerns or the, the concerns of AEG or the production company? Well, it was all of our concerns. But, um, no, it was very obvious that Michael had great trust in Dr. Murray in that meeting and deferred to him on the, issue, on the questions of health. And was it obvious to you that Dr. Murray also had great concern for Michael Jackson? You're asking my observation? Yes, yes. yes I thought they had a close personal relationship. All right. And it appeared that, that Dr. Murray cared, wanted to help Michael Jackson. Yes, it did. Were you directly involved in any of the negotiations with Dr. Murray 
hiring Dr. Murray um, for this this tour? No. All right. Want to fat go past the meeting early June and talk about where the production was after that time. Now, in at the time that you had your first meeting in early June at Michael Jackson's house, rehearsals were going on at that time. Yes. All right. And they were going on at the forum. Is that correct? At, th at that time, they, to the best of my recollection, uh, they had probably left uh, Burbank Center Staging, which were the rehearsal studios, um, and had moved into production rehearsals at the forum. It was sometime in June. All right, and uh, and so, uh, do you recall whether or not the rehearsals were at June at that time during that meeting, the first meeting in June? No, I don't. All right, but rehearsals were absolutely going on. You know that. Right? Yes. Okay. And Michael Jackson was expected to be at these rehearsals. Not at all of them. No. Was there was there any concern sometime after in June about Michael Jackson missing rehearsals? There, there was a concern. I think it was more towards uh, the second week in June um, that uh, Kenny expressed, Ortega expressed to me. All right. Prior to the second week in, of June, was there? W w did Kenny Ortega express any concern about Michael Jackson missing rehearsals or having poor rehearsals? N well, not not during the, the May rehearsals were at center staging. And Michael came to a few of those, but he wasn't expected because there was a new band, ostensibly. Some, there were some of the same players he'd used before, but a new music director. So um, they were getting the music right, and he did not need to be at every one of those rehearsals. Okay, so there was no concern in May. How about prior to your meeting, your first meeting in June of 2009? Was there any concern expressed by Kenny Ortega or anybody else? To the best of my recollection, not that early. All right. So mm -hmm. now let's go that first week of June, the early June, mm -hmm. and let's forward that. You're saying that there were problems then with Michael Jackson missing rehearsals. Kenny started to get concerned that Michael wasn't engaged as much as he needed to be, as focused as he needed to be on a production of this magnitude. And you say he started to get concerned? Was this a progressive problem? Or did he just get concerned after missing one rehearsal? I don't know, to be honest with you. All right. Did he address this concern with you? Did Kenny Ortega come to you and say, look, we need to do something? I think he, he well, Kenny spoke to me n numerous times, but I think he also, I think he first went to uh, Paul and to um, Frank DeLeo. Because they were at, they were there every day. I had a business to run. I was doing other things. All right. Now, as we get into June, the first, do you recall when this production was about to pack up and move to London? Do you remember the? Do you know the date of when that was going to occur? To the best of my recollection, um, it was supposed to move to London around June 25th. All right. And so, as we get into June. It becomes extremely important, doesn't it, that rehearsals are 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 attended and well um, um, and, and done well by all the all the individuals involved uh, at, because you're getting close to the time for the show to start. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Sort of the the pressure on on Kenny Ortega and the entire production rises as you get closer to that show. Is that, that is, right? That is correct. And is this this pressure? Did you did you start seeing that in Kenny Ortega? Yes. And and the main concern that Kenny Ortega was having was Michael Jackson's performances, showing up at rehearsals, and his focus. And his focus was the word that Kenny used. When Kenny Ortega brought this to your attention, what what did you do? Um, I may have had a conversation with Dr. Murray. Um, I remember having a phone call with Michael Amir Williams saying, you know, it's really critical that Michael show up for rehearsals because the show is, he's the fulcrum 
of the production, and it really revolves around him. So even though he knows these dance moves, you know, intimately, and um, he's just reinterpreting what he's been doing his whole career. Okay, the entire show, it's such a massive production, it really needs Michael's presence because people have to key off of him and they have to build the cues, the effects, everything off of uh, Michael. And, and why did you call Michael Amir Williams and not Michael Jackson himself? Because when I call, I actually called for Michael to have that discussion, uh, but Michael was, um, I was told he was resting at the time. So you had the conversation instead with Michael Amir Williams. Correct. You said also that you spoke to Dr. Murray. I think I may have had a phone call with him. I'm not, I'm not really not 100% sure. All right. Because there was so much going on at this time. Did you speak to anyone else? No. No. Um, ultimately, as things progressed, there was another meeting held on the 20th of June at Michael Jackson's residence. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. Now let's talk about the events that occurred the week prior. You're familiar that the week prior there were further missed rehearsals. Is that your understanding? I became, I wasn't at the rehearsals that week. I wasn't at the uh, rehearsals that week is the answer. You Sustained. The answer remains. Did you receive phone calls from Kenny Ortega stating that? Objection calls for hearsay. The objection is sustained. In, in, there was a tr uh, in trial, you understand that there was offered into evidence or shown to the jury an email that was sent from Kenny Ortega to you. Correct. Yes. And, and you have seen that email? Yes, you showed it to me. Okay. Um, do what you is that number? I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, just for the benefit of the jury, since it's been reflected, um, can counsel take a moment? Yes, we, we can. <laughs> Let me see your list. I think it's People's One, actually. Thank you from the uh, peanut gallery in the jury box. <laughs> People's One. Thank you. All right. This email from Kenny Ortega, do, do you recall getting this email? I, I believe I got it the next morning. I think it was sent in the middle of the night, and I received it when I woke, awoke the next day. All right. This, this email that, that talks about pulling the plug about we played the tough love card. Did you understand what Kenny Ortega was talking about? I didn't understand the tough love part of it. Um, uh, so, no, I, didn't, I really wasn't sure what he was referring to uh, by the tough love part of it, but I understood the rest of the email um, pertaining to Michael um, coming to rehearsal but not being well being sent home, and that he was getting concerned that um, Ms. Paul Ganga where described the arc of the production, first time I had ever heard that, but that as we were getting closer to the actual opening of this massive show, that there was concern that Michael wasn't really taking it seriously enough or focused um, on it. Was, was there concern that the show could not go on? if he didn't take it more seriously? No, no. So the concern was that it would have to be pushed back further and further and further? That there might have to be postponements if they didn't have enough technical time to deal with the size of the production. And at some point it could be postponed to the point where production would not be possible? I can't speculate on that. When Kenny Ortega in his email suggests pulling the plug. Is that a phrase you used or Paul Gongaware used? Do you know where that came from? No. First time I read it was in that email. All right. And no, no one on our end was ever contemplating pulling the plug. Right. Was, was this, com do you know whether this is a conversation that Kenny Ortega had with Michael Jackson? Objection calls for speculation. Sustain. Calls for hearsay. What did you do in response to getting that email? Well, actually, I got the email, but um, Frank DeLeo, who was out of town at the time and also received the email, um, or was forwarded a copy, I don't know if he was on the original chain, um, he actually called me from either Nashville or Pittsburgh, where his principal residence was, um, and asked me if I would put together a meeting 
on that Saturday that I think I believe this 20th was a Saturday would I put together a meeting um, with Michael dr. Murray um, Kenny Ortega and myself he was pretty adamant about that meeting who Frank yes he thought it was essential to have the meeting yes All right. and what did you do then? Um, I uh, believe I either emailed or called dr. Murray to set up the meeting did Frank DeLeo in his conversation with you about having this meeting did he ever mention to you concern about drug use by Michael Jackson no no um, do you do you recall having any conversation with Dr. Murray about drug use by Michael Jackson? When you say drug use, are you talking about prescription drugs? Yes. Um, there was um, there was one conversation I had with Dr. Murray after in the early in the June meeting. Mm -hmm. um, to my recollection, it was after the at the end of our meeting. I believe I went up to Dr. Murray and said um, that um, Dr. Klein was a dermatologist in Beverly Hills, was also treating Michael, and was he aware of that? And I just left it at that. All right, and, and why did you feel the need to tell Dr. Murray that? What was your concern? My concern, that, uh, my concern and why I felt I should tell him or ask him if he knew about that, was that there was a meeting at, um, a production meeting at Michael's house around that same time period, um, where Michael was not as focused as he usually is because on the production meetings he was like laser focused on every element of the show I mean he's consummate perfectionist um, in this one meeting he just seemed a little distracted not focused and what did that have to do with Dr. Klein? well after the meeting uh, as we were leaving I asked uh, Michael Amir Williams I said is everything okay um, out of concern, and he said, "No, he, j he just came from Dr. Klein's office." All right. And, what did and you I didn't know what that meant, but that's not, what he said to okay. me. You didn't know what kind of treatment, no, or that Dr. Klein was giving Michael no. Jackson, but it was sufficient for you to mention it to Dr. Murray. Yes. Since you didn't know about the treatment that Dr. Klein was giving, did you did you further just say did you did you say, "Hey, Dr. Murray"? My concern is that he looks a little out of it when he leaves Dr. Klein's office, or did you just simply say, hey, he's seeing Dr. Klein? I just, I just said he's seeing Dr. Klein, right. you know, I mean, because he's his principal physician. I thought he should know, in case Michael hadn't told him that he should know that he was seeing another doctor. All right. Um, were, were you aware of any other doctors that, no. at the time? All right. No. You were aware that Michael Jackson had problems in the past uh, with prescription drugs. Okay. I, 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 uh, the objection, just a minute, please. The objection sustained a partial answer straight. All right. What? What, were you, what did you assume that the meeting on June 20, the emergency, was, would you classify this as an emergency meeting, the meeting at Carrollwood on June 20th? Well, emergency, based on Kenny's email, it would appear that it was, in his mind, an emergency meeting. I don't like to use that word because it sounds a little alarmist to me, but there, w there was a meeting held. Right. Yeah, it wasn't just Kenny Ortega's email, it was also Frank DeLeo's phone call. Correct. It was actually Frank who asked, and he couldn't be there because he was out of town, and he asked me to set up the meeting. Because it might have been a meeting that Frank would have set up with Dr. Murray and Michael himself. What did you think the meeting was going to be about? Michael's tardiness on re attending rehearsals. Were you aware of the events that had transpired on June 19th, the day before? Only, only from reading the email about right. sending him home. Right. And Frank DeLeo didn't discuss it with you? He wasn't, he wasn't there. So he was also responding to what Kenny was telling us. Okay. And, and also John Hugendahl, who was the production manager for the show, also said that he felt that there was something wrong. 
All right, so at the meeting, who, who showed up? Who, who, who arrived for the meeting? The meeting was, uh, the attendees at the meeting were Dr. Murray, um, Michael Jackson, uh, Kenny Ortega, and me. And this was at Michael Jackson's residence, at right? The at the living room in the Carroll Did House. you call Dr. Murray yourself? I don't remember if I emailed him or called him um, about the meeting. Did you call Kenny Ortega? Yes. And Michael Amir or Michael Jackson? No, I actually asked Dr. Murray to set up the meeting. All right, so you called Dr. Murray and mm -hmm. said, please set this up. Mm -hmm. Did you tell him what it was yes. for? Yes. Did you tell Dr. Murray what the meeting was for? I, I believe I told him that Kenny Ortega had concern. I may have even forwarded him that email. I'm not, I, don't, I don't remember, but it's very possible I may have even forwarded him the email or read the email to him. All right. Um, so what time was the meeting held? To the best of my recollection, it was in the early afternoon on Saturday, June 20th, 2008. And what, what, 2009. What, and what was discussed at this meeting? Um, at the meeting, uh, Kenny um, opened the meeting up by talking about his concern that Michael needed to really focus and to really pay attention to this production, that it was massive, and they couldn't do it without him. They needed his engagement. They needed to build it around him. There were huge technical um, a aspects to this production, including Michael flying in a 3D suit and all these things. Um, that really required his attendance, especially in the uh, later stage production rehearsals. Would you classify Kenny Ortega's description of this as animated? Was he pretty excited when he was talking about this? No, he was, pre he was pretty level and calm. And was he directing this at Michael Jackson? Yes. All right, and what was Michael Jackson's response? Michael didn't respond immediately, okay? Dr. Murray spoke for Michael on the situation and Michael's focus and Michael's showing up and uh, guaranteed us that Michael would, would get into it, would connect. Um, Michael then explained that he had been working with Travis Payne, the lead choreographer, at home, that he knew these routines. You know, that's why he hadn't really engaged as intensely as Kenny would have liked him to up till now. I mean, Michael was very clear that he was ready. What he said to Kenny, to the best of my recollection in terms of the wording, is he said, you build the house and I'll put on the door and paint it. Um, and that was, that's as direct a quote as I can remember. And this is a quote that he, he gave at the meeting? Cor correct, correct. And, and, and to Kenny Ortega? To Kenny Ortega directly. And what was Kenny Ortega's response to that? It was great. That's all I wanted to hear from you. All okay. right, so. Yes. And that, that, that was happening. There was an exchange between Dr. Murray and Dr. Kenny, and Dr. Ken, and then Kenny Ortega and Dr. Murray, that uh, Kenny should be the director of the show and leave Michael's health to Dr. Murray. Was, was Kenny Ortega complaining about Michael Jackson's health? No, he just didn't understand why Michael wasn't engaged the way he expected him to be. So one of the, one of the reasons he was speculating is that there were health concerns. All right. And Kenny Ortega was making that, that comment that may, perhaps there's health concerns. Correct. Did he make any comments about drug concerns, use of drugs? Not in that meeting, no. Did he, did he ever make that, that comment to you? Was he ever any, expressed that concern to you, ever? Yeah, calls for here today. Sustain. Did anybody at that meeting discuss with Dr. Murray about the possibility that Michael Jackson was using drugs, prescription drugs or otherwise? No. Not to my recollection. Never brought up in that meeting at all? Not to my recollection, no. You did not go to, to Dr. Murray after the meeting and tell him anything about it? No. All right. You don't know if Kenny Ortega did? No. We all left together, so I don't think so. Dr. Murray left with you? No, he stayed, he stayed on. All right. Were you present at the rehearsals on 23rd and 24th? Yes, I was. Okay. Was that a standard practice for you? For me? Yes. Yeah. Well, considering the meeting we had on June twentieth, yes, it, it would have been it would have been remiss of me not to show up to the first rehearsal after that meeting. You see, it seemed important to you to show yes. up. Yes, yes, it did. So make sure everything was back on track. Correct. All right. 
want to take you to the 25th of June, 2009, at the hospital. When did you first learn that Michael Jackson was taken to the hospital? I received a phone call from Frank DeLeo. I think it was approximately 10.30 or 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, that Michael was having trouble breathing. There were paramedics at the house. Um, where was I? I was in Westwood. He said, you're closer to the house than me. Can you get up there right away? Um, I'm still at the Beverly Hilton Hotel. All right. And, and what time was this? I believe, I believe, to the best of my recollection, it was somewhere around 10.30 or 11 o'clock in the morning. All right. And this came from Frank DeLeo? Yes. First right. call I got was from Frank DeLeo. Okay. Do you know who called Frank DeLeo? No. All right. So what did you do in response to that? I jumped in my car and uh, sped up to uh, Michael's house on Carrollwood Drive. All right, and what time, do you, do you recall how long it took you to get to Michael's house in Carrollwood Drive? About 15 minutes. All right. And when you arrived, what did you see? The uh, paramedics uh, and the ambulance, the red ambulance was leaving the uh, gates of the Carrollwood Drive, and right behind it were two um, SUVs, black SUVs, that I believed had Michael's security patrol and his uh, family, meaning, meaning the children. They were leaving the, the residence? Correct. And what did you do? I s turned my car around and got behind them. Okay. And you went to the hospital? Yes. All right. Were you at the hospital the entire time um, that security or Michael Jackson was there? Yes, I was. All right. And do you recall how long you stayed when you left the hospital? I was there all day into the early evening. And at some point during that period of time, you saw Dr. Murray there? Yes, I did. All right. And you saw Dr. Murray in the emergency room? When they were, where there was a curtain, they were behind these sliding glass doors. I was in the hallway. Eventually, I was joined by Frank DeLeo. The two of us were in the hallway sitting on a gurney, as I remember. And there was this flurry of activity going on behind this curtain in the um, emergency room at the Ronald Reagan Emergency Center at UCLA. All right. And you saw Dr. Murray in there? Yes. All right. And uh, where else did you see Dr. Murray? In the hospital, if you remember? Um, later that day, um, in a lobby, um, to the, to a lobby that was south of the emergency room complex. There was a lobby connecting the hospital. Um, and it, there was a conference room that we were using. And I saw him in front of that conference room. All right. And what were you using the conference room for, Mr. Phillip? Just to uh, get everyone, you know, Frank, everyone involved with Michael, his attorneys, everyone in a room to deal with um, the tragedy that right. unfolded. And, and when you say deal with the tragedy, you're talking about how to announce it to the public, for instance, how to, to deal with the media, that kind of thing? Correct. All right. All right. Did you have occasion to talk to Dr. Murray? Once. And where were you when you had that conversation with him? I was in, the, um, in this lobby um, of the um, Ronald Reagan building. All right. And did Dr. Murray say anything to you about what had happened with Michael Jackson? No, he was in severe distress, obviously. Did, did he say anything to you? Um, I, 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 no, you know, to be honest with you, I don't remember there was so much going on, but he was just in severe distress. All right, I'll pass the witness. Mr. Chernoff, thank you. May this be an appropriate time to take the mid-afternoon break? That's fine, Your Honor. Yes? <laughs> Let's do that, ladies and gentlemen. Please take the mid-afternoon break. Of course, remembering all of the admonishments, we'll be in recess until approximately uh, 2.35, and we'll... Notify you. Thank you.